Thanks, Laurent. Laurent was one of the first people I met when I was on this journey from, uh, let's see, five billion in sales at Tiffany to uh, zero, where we um, started our new brand called Rosie at this past May. Um, so anyway, I'm Pam Cloud. It's nice to see all of you. Um, we launched Rosiet in May of uh, 2023 after working on it for about um, two years. And um, our mission is to create a modern, um, sustainable pearl brand and really have people think our, our tagline is pearl jewelry as you've never seen before. Um, so really to blend this idea of a beautiful, sustainable material, if farmed in the right way, with iconic design. Um, we like to say modern pearls, traceable gems. Um, and we're really pearl focused. Um, and we really think about how we source, who we source with, and we source directly uh, with the farmers um, and chose the ones that would work with us in this way. Our initial set of designs are all based on this idea of water. We worked with a jewelry designer named Eddie Borgo. Some of you may know or have heard of Eddie. Uh, Eddie has his own costume jewelry brand. He's a CFDA member, a Vogue Fashion Award winner. Um, and I had known Eddie from a collaboration I did at Tiffany. Um, and we really came at it from, we have this beautiful material, but how do we blend design? And everything that we do is inspired by water. So you see here um, a new way to think of a single pearl. Um, less traditional, more modern, two water drops that form this idea of a padlock. Um, and from that, we hang these beautiful South Sea Australian pearls. Uh, we also have some designs that hold diamonds, um, accented by a pearl. So while we're pearl focused, uh, we do think about those adjacent materials, how we can trace those. And then we do everything with a little pearl accent. So we say always with a pearl um, within our designs. We use that link, which we call our treasure lock link, to um, turn it into a look for a new tennis bracelet. So these are mother of pearl discs um, that connect with our beautiful mother of pearl material. Um, we also do these in necklaces. We do them with diamonds, um, with a little bit of a pearl accent. Um, and we use that water drop motif all the way throughout. And then we think about how to pull that idea of water into other motifs. So you see a cameo a ring with two water drops that form a heart shape. Um, the ring on the right then would be if those uh, water drops were flattened out and form a beautiful heart um, in a more traditional way, but still designed. And then the centerpiece is our unity symbol, which is, think of it as two water drops coming together, and then we carve that out of the Australian uh, mother of pearl. Uh, before I go any further then, a little bit more about me. Uh, as Laurent said, I was with Tiffany for 26 um, years, a lifetime really, I grew up there. Um, I was always in merchandising, so I was always on the global side. Um, and for the 12, uh, the last 12 years I was there, I was the chief merchandising officer. So responsible for product development, uh, category planning, demand planning, and all of replenishment. Um, when I left Tiffany and decided not to go into a corporate role again, um, I thought a lot about white space in the jewelry industry. Um, we're focused on North America to start. Um, and Pearls just naturally came to mind as a place again to marry this approach of design and materials. Um, I do a little bit of, of side advising and consulting um, and also invest in some other jewelry brands that share these values. So why pearls, why roseate? Um, we love the beautiful pearl brands that are out there. Mikimoto pretty much dominates as a global brand. Um, you've got some big brands here in Europe, past Paley in Australia, certainly Robert Vaughn in Tahiti. Um, but it's fragmented. You've got a lot of beautiful designers who are working um, in smaller runs. And then you have the mega brands, which dabble in pearls, but they tend to be diamond brands or gold brands, so not necessarily their focus. So we saw white space there. We saw more generic space there. As you know, jewelry has been moving from 
the unbranded to the branded over the past decade and continues to move that way. So we focus less on the generic and more on the design. Um, we are for women, typically women over 40, who um, have a disposable income where they can spend over $1,000 on a design jewelry brand um, and also care deeply about the earth and our planet. Um, and we are leveraging the growing interest in pearls in men, uh, with men wearing pearls, uh, Harry Styles, LeBron James, some others certainly did us a favor um, in wearing pearls uh, over the past uh, two or three years. Um, and as you heard from Kyle, um, we think about his sustainability not just as assurance, but proof. Um, we travel to the pearl farms, we buy from the, them directly, um, and we make sure we can back up our claims and we're not just greenwashing. Um, so our direct our direct supply is with Paspali in Australia and Kamoka in Tahiti. Um, we buy our diamonds from Lightbox, um, which are lab-grown diamonds out in Gresham, Oregon, and we handcraft everything in North America. So, as we thought about Roseate, we thought about these designs as they celebrate nature and water. The idea is that each year we would bring one or two new designers into the brand. Uh, to reinterpret the material and probably be inspired again by nature um, and about how a pearl is created um, in this beautiful way. Um, and we reimagine that jewelry that is truly ethical and traceable. For us, sustainability is defined by traceability. Um, and so we want to explain that to our customers and actually take them to that place where they're, they're farmed. Um, and as I mentioned, we're looking for consumers who invest in both jewelry and in, um, in making the world a better place. We love this quote, um, I think another Forbes writer, but if you were to design a new jewelry category from scratch, pearls would be it. They are 100% natural and the only gem that grows in a living creature. They are renewable, unlike mine gemstones, once removed from the ground, no more will ever be formed. Here's our team. Um, I founded it along with my husband, um, who serves as the COO. Uh, his background is legal and nonprofit work, and I'll talk a little bit about how our give back strategy connects to what we're doing. Uh, Mike Kowalski, who was the longtime CEO of Tiffany and my boss for many, many years, is one of our founding investors. Um, and we've brought on many uh, people who are helping us along the way in terms of sales and marketing and branding excellence. So how we tell our story? Well, we start with the product. Uh, what we've learned along the way is sustainability is beautiful, but that's not why people buy. They buy for design, um, and they buy because of trust. And they buy because of the emotion that, that they have invested in that jewelry purchase. Um, I don't know why that a $1,500 piece of jewelry is different than buying $1,500 handbags or shoes, but it is. Typically, a self-purchase is almost always because of something that someone wants to celebrate, a promotion, a new baby, um, a remarkable moment in their lives. And that is absolutely true of women even coming in to buy for themselves. Um, we started here with Australian South Sea pearls and Tahitians. And we really focus on giving people this sense of place and the most beautiful places that they come from. So this past summer, we traveled out to Paspali uh, to visit their pearl farm in Curry Bay. Um, and to actually see the seeding and the harvesting and um, the harvesting of the mother of pearl shells. And then just a few weeks ago, we returned from uh, Tahiti uh, at Kamoka Farms um, in Ahe in Tahiti. Um, and we stayed with Josh and Celeste who run the farm out there and really got a sense for what they do. Um, if you don't know Kamoka, please look them up. These people... Um, sustainability isn't actually a word for them, it's a way of life, um, and it's really uh, a remote, uh, remarkable um, endeavor that they have going on. Of course, we started um, this journey uh, commercially online, um, which is where one starts today, although I'll talk um, about what we learned very quickly. Um, but this is our website, which is where we launched in May of 2023. Um, this is one of our collections called our wand collection. Someone was speaking earlier about jewelry as talismans, which is something that I really believe in, something that 
um, not only you find compelling in terms of a design, but keeps you safe and has a real emotional response. Um, so we have our wands. Wands do magic in the world, and, and we'll talk about how um, they are doing some magic for us. Uh, we are on all the social channels, so this is our Instagram page. Um, I would ask before you leave, please follow us on Instagram. It's hard to build an audience, and um, the best thing you can do for small brands is to engage, to follow them, um, and to, of course, uh, vote with your wallets. Um, but we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, uh, we are just launching a YouTube channel, we're on TikTok, so um, the content that you feed, and again, I think the last two speakers talked about how it doesn't have to be perfect content and that people do get lost in the glossy. I thought that was a very good way of saying it. Um, so we try to do a blend. You're seeing our Instagram grid here, but um, we're much more casual um, and we do a lot from sort of the back office on TikTok. Uh, color was important to us. <laughs> I come from Tiffany. Tiffany blue certainly is in my background. Um, but we thought about what a roseate pink would be like. Pink is in the name. The name means rose-colored optimism. And we also love the way pearls are accented and um, glow with this beautiful pink hue often. And so roseate pink is part of our packaging, but we didn't want to exclude um, the men or people who would rather have a more neutral uh, package, so we have complementary colors in roseate gray. And a bit about our go-to market strategy. So I mentioned that we talked, uh, we launched online in May. It became very apparent early on that uh, building a new brand, uh, especially post-COVID, just online was going to be too expensive in terms of marketing dollars um, and building traffic and take too long. Uh, so we quickly looked for space. We live in New York City. We quickly looked for a small space where we could open a shop. Uh, we opened at Bleecker Street and Christopher. If you know New York, please come see us if you're in town. Um, and this was a critical moment for us this fall because we can welcome people in, we can talk to them about the brand, we can tell stories. Um, what I found, if you run retail shops, people know very little about pearls. Um, they think that the expensive ones are the ones that, at least in the United States, I should qualify that, but uh, U.S. customers tend to think that the um, most expensive ones were found at the bottom of the ocean and the least expensive ones um, are the ones that are cultured. So it's um, a lot of education in store, telling our story, showing these beautiful places. And the store has really been um, a place where we can do that. Uh, we call it a shop up because we um, took a very short term lease. And one of the ideas of the brand is bringing in new designers and maybe popping up or shopping up somewhere else. So we'll be um, on Bleecker Street through uh, June of this year, and then we may move on to uh, one or two different locations, um, either in the United States or, or Europe. Um, so we did this really with a limited capital investment that was important, um, and it was also a place where we could um, have in-store events, sip and shops, um, women's groups, educational groups, so again, inviting people in um, to talk about our brand. Uh, we have been branching into wholesale um, slowly and methodically with people who can tell our story. Our first one was with Showfields in D.C. They're, um, they were a bit of a startup incubator um, in both New York, D.C. and Miami. Um, that has just uh, uh, finished up for us. It was a, about a six-month project. Um, and now our next horizon is looking for additional wholesale partners. Um, and again, we're looking for those uh, folks out there who want to tell our story of, of both design and sustainability. So when we thought about content for launch, um, we broke it down into themes. Um, this first one was being inspired by all things water. And again, the sense of place um, that they come from such amazing, beautiful places in the world. Um, our, one of our um, graphic logos is born from water and designed in New York. Um, and so we tell a design story about 
taking this product and working and collaborating with uh, Eddie Borgo to design um, a new way of wearing pearls and um, thinking about them in the modern sense. Um, we have this idea that women should um, free their pearl strands from their jewelry boxes, which so many of us have inherited pearls from our grandmothers um, or been gifted them from our moms, um, certainly for an occasion. So how can we take those, redesign them, and kind of make them into things that people want to wear um, every day as part of their stack, whether it's their necklace stack or on their wrists or the many ways that women mix and match uh, jewelry. Um, Education, I mentioned it in the store, educating the consumers. Consumers in the United States um, don't really, again, know the difference between the prices of pearls or even the difference between um, freshwater pearl farming or saltwater pearl farming. Um, and so that's something that we talk all day, every day with consumers about. Um, and really the difference and how um, you should and you can ask for the source of your pearls and, and where they go back to. Um, within this store, we do a lot of behind the scenes, um, and this is where we talk about the promise of pearls, whether it's bringing them in, designing them, sending off to the vendors. Our vendor base is in North America. We work with um, jewelers in uh, New York City, in Rhode Island, and out in um, L.A., and then we have a real focus on giving back. Um, I mentioned earlier in our wands collection, um, we want to do some magic in the world. So our approach is to partner with nonprofits who focus on healthy oceans and healthy waters um, and really be transparent in how we give back. Um, and so we have three partners out there um, that we work with, and I'll, I'll go into those in a moment. Just on our go-to-market, we were... Um, really fortunate to have a great feature in the New York Times right after we launched um, that talked about how we did this, who we are, what our focus is, and where we'll go um, from here. And really this love that we have for, for this material um, and how customers should know more about it. Um, and then we got some great press on um, in some other um, publications. Here's just a a smattering of them, and um, it's been it's been terrific to tell our story. Um, so, I mentioned Rosiette for Good and the Wands. Um, we work with three partners. Uh, one is the Billion Oyster Project in New York City. If you don't know Billion Oyster, please look them up. They are repopulating a billion oysters um, in the New York harbors by the year 2035. Um, cleaning the waters. As you know, oysters are a nature's um, magnificent filtration system. So cleaning the waters, bringing back the sea life into the harbor, um, really amazing things that they're doing. Um, we work with Conservation International and as our global partner and all the good work that they do um, supporting healthy oceans and specifically in blue carbon um, and getting that message out to their constituents. Um, and then interesting, I know the last um, segment here is on uh, Fairmind um, Gold. We work with uh, Pure Earth, which is an organization that cleans up supply chains across the world. Really, really inspiring work, hands-on work. Um, they identify villages in Bangladesh, go in, clean up the toxins um, and some of the mercury poisoning for the next generation um, and make sure that that kind of thing doesn't happen again in those villages. Um, Pure Earth does work with uh, gold uh, miners in South America and specifically Peru. So um, we are delighted to work with them as well. Um, so what comes next for Roseate? Uh, we are um, headed into our second year. We are looking um, to launch uh, two new designers this year. They'll be announced shortly, um, one specifically in the men's arena and then another one um, who will combine more of our diamonds with our pearl and mother of pearl. Um, and then we'll continue to roll out our trade partners, um, fine tune our messages. Um, you know, it's a bit of trial and error for us right now as you are a startup brand in the world of, of how you spend your mar money in marketing. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll head on into our second year. So thanks for listening about Roseate and happy to answer any questions.